All right, I'm live on YouTube with an update. So let me just type in Discord. And let me see if I can get a link. It's like I have to go to my own live stream to get a YouTube link. But this is my new office. It's actually um, a rental property that we had and that got kind of trashed. We were renting it out to some renters um, and just decided I need the space for fun too. At home, we have multiple kids, including our newborn, and there's just not really a ton of space. Ooh, I found my own live stream. Space. Now I'm gonna paste it Ooh, into I Discord. My own live stream. Space. Now I'm gonna paste Boom. it into Discord. I'm trying ultra low latency mode, so hopefully it'll be a little better so you can see behind me. So hopefully as you can see, working progress, setting up here, setting up desks. Working progress, setting up here, setting up desks. So it's cool. Uh, it's really awesome having my own space and it's really important. I personally need a lot of quiet to work. So for my paid work, it's really impossible to, for me to do it at home. What I found is that I actually was sort of subconsciously not doing certain work that I knew I would get distracted and frustrated doing because of the home environment. So work that required a lot of thought or a lot of deep, intense stuff, I would sort of procrastinate on and not know why. So um, what I did when I moved here is I started getting a lot of work done. So I haven't been around in Fun 2 for the last week or so because I've been catching up on a lot of work that I needed to, to get done. Um, and frankly, I can work on fun too in my sleep. There's certain stuff I've done so many times, it's almost automatic, but uh, there were some other projects that I needed to finish that required a lot of deep thought and a lack of interruption, and I was just not getting that at home, especially with the whole COVID-19 thing uh, that just made, forced everybody to be home. So now kids are out of school and well, before kids were out of school because of COVID-19. Now, at least they don't have schoolwork that's competing with home stuff. And I have this space where I can go, I can work. I tend to do like two stints a day. Like I'll work through till like around lunchtime, take a break and then come back and work through the afternoon. And it's like the first time that, you know, the longest time where I feel like I'm actually starting to accomplish things, not just get stuff done, not just be busy, but actually like make forward progress on some larger goals. So that's been really super nice. And it's something that's really been missing in my world for way too long. So this is really the start of something awesome. And, you know, basically I've been reassembling desks. I have some Ikea furniture over here I need to put together. I have some old desks I was talking on Discord from really old desks from Anthro Corporation that made awesome, super strong desks. And they're made out of HDF, not MDF. And I was just realizing that one of these desks that I'm actually sitting at right now, I've had for like over 20 years, which is kind of crazy. Like there's probably some people on Discord right now in my channel who were not born. I know my first daughter who's now 20 in college was not born when I bought this desk and it's still in great condition. It's just, they're built like tanks. And I wish more stuff was built like this. Like they're built so well that it's hard for me to conceive of something that could happen to them that would actually make them non-functional. Like they're going to last for a very long time, which is cool. So, um, what else? Um, I want to show you some stuff I've done on Bitbucket because I made this pet peeve video um, about how I don't like people submitting like bump requests. I think that's a Gen 2 thing, like please bump this package. That is sort of like a cult Gen 2 culture thing and it's actually not really great for a community project because there's more to a community project than just asking for stuff and getting it. 
like there's a process to involve people. You need to let people know why you want the package bumped. And I just don't like the word bump. Um, so let me switch over here. So this is code.fun2.org. I've instituted some standards for uh, submitting bugs. One of them is that uh, a bug needs to have a uh, issue that it's referencing. And the idea here is that, you know, we have a bug tracker, bugs.fun2.org. It's really good to use it. The bug tracker has a flow. So, you know, we have ready to fix issues. These are ones that if you click start work, this start work button, it'll get assigned to you and you can start working on it. Um, it's really good to it's submit a bug, and not just submit a bug, but submit a bug that has some detail that explains why something is important to you. So don't just say, bump this package. Like, why do you want it bumped? Just because there's a new version? What's in the new version? Why is that important to you? That information is useful. People need context to know why they're working on what they're working on. To just ask somebody randomly, upgrade this package, it's a little presumptuous. And also, you're not really giving people context. So um, the, the flow for fun too is really fill out a bug report. I even have notes up here on sort of how to do it and what to include and not to include. Follow those instructions. Um, and what's gonna happen is you create an, uh, an issue and then I notice that a lot of people, you create the issue, you create the most minimal issue in the universe that I've ever seen in my life and then you immediately submit a pull request. Well, I haven't had a chance to even move it out of intake. So there's a bug in intake that is super minimal that just says bump this package. And then all of a sudden I get a pull request. Like I don't even know what the package is. So give it some time. Um, let it get to ready to fix. In the meantime, we have currently 31 ready to fix bugs. So if you're looking for something to do while your issue is moving into ready to fix, there's plenty of stuff to do. And there's stuff in ready to fix for pretty much all skill levels. And these you can create a PR for, a pull request. Um, and for that, what you wanna do is go over to Bitbucket and create a fork of kit fix ups and then create a branch in the fork with your fix in it. And then I actually renamed my, my fork differently so I don't get confused because sometimes I do have to commit to kit fix ups. So then you can create a pull request. And I have this test branch that I was using to test some new code I added to code.fun2.org to do some validation of pull requests. And I did this so people have to follow the rules a bit. So if I continue, it auto populates the title. Often I was getting pull requests, they just said master here. So that, that's not helpful because then it just the description of the pull request is master. I mean, that's kind of sloppy. So if I click create, you'll see now there's some groovy code that runs and it's going to check and make sure that the, the PR title actually has this format where it's referring, referencing a fun to issue. So let's just put in a fake one that doesn't exist yet. And try to create it. And it doesn't like that because it couldn't find the issue on bugs.fun2.org. So it's actually going to check to make sure that the issues you're referencing exist and then also um, are in the correct state. They should be in ready to fix, they should be in progress or uh, test validation, or there is a bug type called ongoing for like, uh, if there's ongoing updates, like we keep getting Chromium updates, that's just gonna happen. So why open a new bug? Keep the original bug open and that bug can just be referenced. So this is gonna enforce some rules. Um, before I had things set up a little differently, it would prevent merges unless those rules were followed, which meant I had to track down people and get them to fix their PR so it met the requirement so I can merge it, which is kind of annoying. This way, it won't even let you create the PR unless it's in the right format. So it puts that on you, but once it's created, 
you should be good to go and I don't have to track you down. Um, so you can see this is just a lot easier to read. And then also, you know, we do want to have a conversation about what we're doing, why we're doing it um, in the issue. So that's why it's important to actually have an issue open for things. There should be an issue that references the work. And then when that work is done, we close the issue. And we want to put some thought into how we fix things. Different things require different levels of thought, but the appropriate level of consideration of how we want to approach something just because you know, if, if we don't, what ends up happening is potentially I get a PR or an autogen that wasn't done right. And we could have just talked about it with a few comments first and got on the same page. And then you, you could have submitted one that was perfect from the get go. Or maybe you're submitting code. Um, but like, I don't know, I'm not, it might be code that I don't necessarily like, I can't, I'm not going to merge it because I don't necessarily, I'm not on board with the approach. So it's just sort of a, a waste. So it's really best if you want to do proof of concept code to just create your branch, do work in a branch, don't create a PR and just create a link in the issue. And I can look at your work and comment on it before I'm just getting sent code. Cause you know, it just gives me more stuff to wade through. Like we're getting a lot of uh, PRs these days. So I need to go through, I need to, like try to understand what has changed. If it's an e-build update, I need to look for any potential issues with the e-builds and the more PRs I get that are in perfect or near perfect state, the easier the flow goes for that. Like it makes work easier for me. It make, makes work easier for you because you don't have to go in and fix the PR. And we don't have this sort of back and forth where, you know, I'm like, please fix this, please fix this, please fix this, please fix this. Oh, and fix this. And why is this this way? And why is that that way? Picking through people's work is kind of annoying. And I know I don't like it when people do that to my work. It's just sort of irritating. So it's nice to, to be able to just say, hey, you know, this looks awesome. I'm just merging this because there's nothing wrong with it. It's good. So I want to try to, as a community, get us there um, is, as much as possible. And I think that's about it for the live stream. I'm sort of poking around. Oh, look. Yeah. So my oldest daughter is 20. Uh, that is the case. And yeah, you were in diapers, Stellar Ninjas, the bronze kneecap. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy, you know, it's really crazy. I am 46. Um, if you find a desk with HDF, it's like super heavy. It's super, it's just super compressed wood. Like it, it's not going to break where MDF just, you can destroy it by kicking it. Oh, what else? Oh, yeah, and some people saying hi. Hi, Lucas. So that that's sort of the update on, on bugs. And I'm um, really excited about the office. I'm probably going to check out now just because I don't want to do a super crazy long live stream, but this will be archived as the first peek at the new place and also the new camera setup. So I've gone back and forth between Fuji and this little Canon that I have, which I actually got a, a smoking deal on used. I think it's an M6 with a little pancake lens. And it's what I did the first uh, Welcome to Fun 2 video with that's on YouTube. And it was really good, but it had some weird issues. Um, but mainly they impacted uh, photography, not video as much. So I tried Fuji. Fuji is kind of a pain in the butt for uh, photo. Well, no, it's great for photo. It's pain for video production. And Canon really has some awesome stuff. So I figured out how to get this M6 working for live streaming, and it's really great. 
Um, and then I'm going into a Blackmagic Decklink HDMI capture card, which is really working out well, and OBS is recognizing it. Um, the Gen 2 package for support for this, I can't remember if it was in a third-party overlay or not. I sort of hacked it, and I'm using a hacked version locally, but I did get it working, but I do want to work on a Fun2 uh, package that's better maintained for it. Just in case any of you go out and get a deck link, they're really nice. You just put HDMI in and you can grab it from any source. Whereas before on my live streams, I was using the Canon in USB mode where the quality really was not good. This is getting uncompressed HDMI to the card. OBS is compressing the, uh, the stream and I'm in control of the stream through OBS. It's pretty cool. Hey everybody, hey Juiced. Hey, Derlinixer and Shreyesh. Hey, Jerome. Hey, this is cool. We actually have some people joining. This is neat. We got the live stream hellos going. I like it. So yeah, I was just introducing people to the office and talking about, um, oh, look, I'm showing you my YouTube screen. I should probably not do that. Um, the, uh, new updates on code.fun2.org where if you create a PR now it's going to enforce some standards for I'll just show that again for the title if you try to create it it's going to say hey it needs to be in a certain format and you actually have to reference issues that exist uh, see it says well that issue doesn't exist and the issue actually, all the issues you reference actually have to be in the ready to fix uh, in progress test integration or ongoing status. And the idea there is it's really to sort of enforce this workflow where we create a JIRA issue first, where there's some review and discussion about the work before PR start flowing in. And it takes a little bit of time, but in the end, I think it allows us to work a lot more efficiently and also more in a community style. Um, I need to review the PRs too, so that you know it takes time. And if I have a JIRA issue that I've been able to comment on, I'm much more likely to approve the PR because I'm on board with the approach. I've had my opportunity to comment on it. So there you got it. And I'll get rid of the window and then I can look at YouTube comments. I'm not going to do a trick. Stellar Ninjas. I'm not going to. This isn't a magic show. What if I just instantly went into like camboy mode? That would be bad, right? <laughs> like, that's the weird thing about these vlogging setups. It's like, it could be used for bad stuff. So. It's a little weird having like a vlogging setup, but it's super fun. I, I love the live streaming stuff. And I actually, I really like live streaming a lot better than, uh, than producing a video. Like producing a video, you try to make it perfect. You do all these takes and then I need to take the MP4, move it over to editing software, go through, put music on. It just takes a long time where live streaming, I just go, and you know, hopefully it's good enough, right? All right, so I don't wanna have a super long live stream because it will be on the site and I want people to like actually maybe watch this even when it's not live. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream. I appreciate everybody who tuned in to check out the new office and get a little update on Fun2 PR submission and I will see you later.